Hello everyone, it's me Yono. So everyone is welcome back to my YouTube channel, We Got Tutorials. And so friends, today we are going to study the second topic from the first chapter of history, that is the story of human evolution, a part the precursors of modern human beings. So before moving into that topic, I have to ask you, did you understand the last class? Okay, so if you had any doubts, please ask and clear it through the chat box okay okay friends so let us move on to today's topic that is the story of human evolution so here at first uh, here it is saying that there some pictures of the skulls are given so here they are saying that look at these four skulls so a b c d there are four skulls pictures are given and here it is saying that the skull a is belong to an ape the skull A belongs to an ape and the skull B belongs to a species known as Australopithecus and this uh, picture C belongs to a species known as Homo erectus, literally known as upright man. Okay. And the picture D skull belongs to a species known as Homo sapiens, literally thinking or wise man to which all present day human beings belong. Okay, so here, actually, here it is given four types of skulls. So, the first skull belongs to a species uh, known as an ape. And the second B part skull belongs to a species known as Australopithecus. And the C is belong to a species known as Homo erectus, which is already known as the upright man. And the D, skull D is belong to all the modern human beings. So we all are known as our scientific name of human beings is known as Homo sapiens. So these are uh, all the present day human beings will belong to this species. Okay, D. So the skull D is belong to whom? Yes, all the present day human beings known as Homo sapiens, literally thinking or wise man. Okay. So, there are some similarities and differences uh, you can see in this. Okay, so looking at this skull also, you can list the differences, right? Okay, um, by looking at the brain size, um, then jaws, then teeth. There are so many differences in these four pictures, A, B, C and D. Okay, so let us move on into the next para. The differences that you notice in the skull shown in the illustration are some of the changes that came about as a result of human evolution. The story of human evolution is enormously long and somewhat complicated. There are also many unanswered questions and new data often lead to a revision and modification of earlier understanding. Let us look at some of the developments and their implications more closely. So here they are saying that by looking at these four pictures also you can notice uh, that there are some similarities as well as some dis uh, dissimilarities, right? Okay. And here um, we are going to study about the story of human evolution. So if we are saying about the story of human evolution, it will take a very long time. So, because of that reason, it is very complicated to say. So, the story of human evolution is very long and what complicated. Okay. And uh, regarding the story of human evolution, still there are many unanswered questions. Okay. Uh, of which often lead to a revision and the modification of earlier understandings. Okay. So, here the story of human evolution is enormously long and very much complicated so you know in this section also there are many unanswered questions which leads to a revision and the modification of earlier understandings okay and let us look at some of the developments and their implications more closely so i already said you there are some unanswered questions so let us move into them very detailedly okay so hope all of you are ready to move so, okay, we can move on to the next paragraph. So, it is possible to trace these developments back to between 36 and 24 million years ago. We sometimes find it difficult to conceptualize such long spans of time. Okay, 
so here it is saying that we sometimes find it difficult so this development the story of human evolution can be traced between the years 36 million years ago to 24 million years ago okay so it is possible to trace these developments between 36 million years ago and 24 million years ago so sometimes we will be finding it difficult to conceptualize such long spans or that vast span of time okay we sometimes find it difficult to conceptualize such long spans of time if you consider a page of your book to represent 10,000 years in itself a vast span of time 10 pages would represent 1 lakh years and 100 pages would equal to 1 million years. To think of 36 million years, you would have to imagine a book 3,600 pages long. That was when primates, a category of mammals, emerged in Asia and Africa. Subsequently, by about 24 million years ago, there emerged a subgroup amongst primates called hominoids. This included ape and much later, about 5.6 million years ago, we find evidences of the first hominoids. So here what they are saying is, uh, the story of human evolution can be traced between 36 and 24 million years ago. And such it is taking a such long span of time, so it is not much easy to conceptualize that long span of time. Okay. So, if you want to consider 36 million years ago, you have to do like this. If you are having a book and the one page of that book will be equal to 10,000 years. So, one page of your book will be equal to 10,000 years. Then, 10 pages of your book would represent 1 lakh years. One page of your book is equal to 10,000 years and 10 pages of your book will indicate 1 lakh years. So 100 pages of your book will indicate 1 million years. So to imagine 36 million years ago, you have to imagine a book which is having 3,600 pages. Okay. So... On that year, uh, so on uh, 36 million years ago only, a, uh, a category of mammals is emerging in Asia and Africa. So by about 36 million years ago, a category of mammal is emerging in Africa and Asia. And it is known as what primates. Okay. Then let us look and um, let us look about primates. Here in the side you can see primates are a subgroup of larger group of mammals. They include monkeys, apes and humans. They have body hair to uh, for what purpose they are having body hair is yes, to protect their body from severe cold and a relatively long gestation period following birth and they have mammary glands to feed their young ones and they are having different types of teeth to tear the flesh and they have the ability to maintain a constant temperature okay so here we have told that about 36 million years ago a category of mammals have been emerged in Asia and Africa and that subgroup or that category of mammal is known as primates and primates means they are a larger uh, they are a subgroup of larger group of mammals okay so primates are a subgroup of a larger group of mammals and in them they include monkeys apes and humans so they include monkeys apes and humans and they are having body hair to uh, for what purpose is yes, they are having body hair to protect their body from severe cold and they are having a relatively long gestation period following birth and they are having mammary glands to feed their young ones and they are having different types of teeth to tear the flesh and they are having the ability to maintain a constant body temperature. The next, subsequently, by about 24 million years ago, there emerged a subgroup amongst primates called hominoids. So, subsequently, about 24 million years ago, in the primates group, there emerged a subgroup known as hominoids. Okay, 
so about 24 million years ago a subgroup has been emerged in primates and they are known as hominoids this included apes so what they included they included apes and much later about 5.6 million years ago much later about 5.6 million years ago we find the first evidence of hominids so about 5.6 million years ago in, in the primates groups also one subgroup has been emerged and it is known as hominids so by about 36 million years ago a category of mammals have been originated in asia and africa it is known as primates then again in primates a subgroup has been arrived at 24 million years ago and it is known as hominoids and again in primates one more subgroup has been emerged in um to, uh, what yes 5.6 million years ago and it is known as hominids okay we find uh, while hominids have evolved from hominoids while hominids have evolved from hominoids and share certain common features there are major differences as well so here it is saying that the hominoids the hominids have been arrived or the hominids have been evolved from whom only as yes, hominoids only so the hominids have been evolved from hominoids so due to that reason they are sharing some common features so they are having some dis uh, similarities due to that case and as well as there is some dissimilarities also so hominids have been evolved from hominoids only so due to that they are sharing some certain common features and as well as there is some major differences also found hominoids have a smaller brain than hominids they are quadrupeds walking on all fours but with flexible four limbs so here hominids are uh, hominoids and hominids uh, here we are going to see the differences between hominoids and hominids okay hominoids are having a smaller brain hominoids are having a smaller brain than hominids so from that uh, that we can understand that hominids are having a larger brain okay so hominoids is having a smaller brain but hominids are having a larger brain and hominoids are quadrupeds quadrupeds means walking on four feet animals are known as quadrupeds okay so hominoids are having smaller brain they are quadrupeds means walking on four feet and they are having a flexible four limb okay Hominids, by contrast, have an upright posture and bipedal locomotion, walking on two feet. And hominids are having a larger brain as compared to hominoids. And they are having an upright posture and bipedal locomotion. Bipedal locomotion is uh, what is walking on two feet. So, quadruped. Quadruped means walking on for all fours and the bipedal locomotion means walking on two feet okay there are also marked differences in the hand which enables the making and using of tools we will examine the kinds of tools made and their significance more closely later so here it is saying that hominids are having an upright posture and bipedal locomotion and also a larger brain than hominoids and um they are having a skilled use of hands which help them to make and use tools so they are having skilled use of hand and which help them or which enable them to make and use tools okay then we will be studying more detail about the tools uh, later okay then next we can move into the last para there are two lines of evidence suggest an african origin for hominids uh, so uh, here it is saying that hominids is having two types of origins so the two lines of uh, evidence are suggesting that uh, the hominids have been originated in africa okay so let us look the two lines of evidences so the first it is the group of african apes that are most closely related to hominids so first here it is saying that 
Uh, first, it is the group of African apes that are most closely related to hominids. So the first line of evidence which is suggesting African origin for hominids is the group of African apes. The group of African apes which are having the similar characteristics as compared to hominids. Okay, so they are most closely related to hominids. So the first line of evidence which is saying that the hominids is having African origin is the group of African apes that are most closely related to hominids. Then the second line of evidence which is saying that uh, African origin for hominids is the earliest hominid fossils, the earliest hominid fossils which belong to the genus of Australopithecus have been found in East Africa and date back to about 5.6 million years ago. So here the second line of evidence is saying that the earliest hominid fossils, the earliest hominid fossils which belongs to a genus known as Australopithecus have been found in east africa and about a date back to 5.6 million years ago as when um hominids originated that year only so about 5.6 million years ago only the hominids have been originated at that time itself uh, the archaeological department got some earliest hominid fossils which belong to the genus australopithecus Okay, and they found it from East Africa. So, the two lines of evidence is suggesting an African origin for hominids. The first one is the African, the group of African apes which are closely related to hominids. The second line of evidence saying or suggesting that African origin for hominids is the earliest hominid fossils which have been found from East Africa about 5.6 million years ago which have belonged to the species or the genus Sorry, genus, not species, genus Australopithecus. In contrast, fossils found outside Africa are no older than 1.8 years ago. So here it is saying that in contrast, we have get some other fossils from other parts of the world. And they are not belongs or they are not belongs to uh, what uh, yes hominids because they are not much older than 1.8 million years ago okay so once again i will conclude that uh, first we uh, we um, look at four skulls pictures and we have understand there are some similarities and dissimilarities in that then we move into the uh, categories now so about 36 million years ago a primates a category of mammals have been originated in asia and africa they are known as primates then we studied the characteristics of primates which is written in this small boxes then next we studied about uh, about 24 million years ago uh, in primates a subgroup has been emerged and they are known as hominoids and about 5.6 million years ago one more uh, subgroup has been emerged in primates and they are known as hominids the next we have told that hominids uh, have been evolved from hominoids only so they are having some similarities as well as dissimilarities and uh, hominids, uh, hominoids are, ha are quadrupeds. They walk on all fours and they are having a smaller brain. They are having flexible forelimbs. The, uh, and they are not having uh, an upright posture. These are the characteristics of hominoids. The next we said about the characteristics of hominids. We said uh, hominids have been originated about 5.6 million years ago. And they are having a larger brain than hominoids. And they are having an upright posture. And also they are having bipedal locomotion. Means they use their two feet okay walking on two feet are known as bipedal locomotion and a skilled use of hands which help them in the making and using of tools the next we told the hominids is having an african origin in two lines of evidences are suggesting that and uh, first uh, suggestion is that it is the group of african apes which are more closely related to the hominids and second uh, line of evidence is suggesting that is uh, the earliest hominid fossils which we have found from East Africa belong to the genus Australopithecus and it is date back to about 5.6 million years ago. And in contrast, the some fossils were found outside other parts of um, what world 
except Africa and they are not much older than 1.8 million years ago. Okay. So, hope you understand that much. Then next, here look. Hominids belong to a family known as Hominidae. So, hominids belong to a family known as Hominidae which includes all forms of human beings. The distinctive characteristics of hominids include a large brain size, upright posture, bipedal locomotion and specialization of the hand. So, here hominids belong to a family. So, these hominids are belonging to a family known as hominidae and in that family it includes the hominid family includes all forms of human beings okay and some of the distinctive characters of hominids are they are having a large brain size and an upright posture bipedal locomotion and the skilled use of the hand that means the specialization of the hand which we have told in the earlier section okay last pair only we have said about the characteristics of hominid so there will be an important question that to justify the african origin of hominids and write the differences between hominids and hominoids or write the features of both hominids and hominoids it is an important question okay it can be asked for four marks okay then next Hominids are subdivided into branches known as, uh, hominids are further subdivided into branches known as genus of which Australopithecus and Homo are important. Okay, so hominids are further subdivided into two branches. First one is Australopithecus and the second one is Homo. And each of this, that means Australopithecus is including several species in that group and Homo is also including several species in Homo group. Okay. And there are some major differences between the Australopithecus and Homo and they will be relating to their brain size, their jaws and teeth. Okay. And the Australopithecus is having a smaller brain size and they are having heavier jaws and a larger teeth than later. Okay, so hominids are further subdivided into branches known as genus of which Australopithecus and Homo are important and Australopithecus is including several species in it and as well as Homo is including several species in that Homo group also. And there are some marked major differences between the Australopithecus and Homo. They will be relating brain size, jaws and teeth. Okay. So, hope you understand today's class. So, if you have any doubt, please clear it through chat box. Okay. Then, uh, if you like my channel, please subscribe my channel for the latest videos. And please like my videos. And thank you.